Hi everybody and welcome back to Chamonix TV. It is such a beautiful day here in Australia and I have got the fabulous Dr. Hara Skoltz with me to come and talk about all things online and online grocery shopping and we'll touch upon the online as well but um, yeah we thought you'd like to know a little bit more about what you can expect for that first time when you actually make your way over to the grocery <laughs> store. <laughs> Before we continue with the episode, I just quickly wanted to jump in here to let you know that Migration Made Easy, which is our signature online course, will be opening its doors very soon again. If you are serious about making your way over to Australia as soon as possible, and you want to become a part of the best community on the internet, you want to make sure that you are on our waitlist. www.shamanitv.com.au forward slash waitlist and we will teach you everything that you need to know in order to maximize your chances to make it to this amazing country as soon as possible. All right, let's jump into the episode. <laughs> so Quite kind of an experience. It, I can imagine, and you <laughs> did it more recently than me, like the yes. first time. How did you yes. experience the first time? I think it's a little bit um, almost intimidating because you don't know the brands, you don't know, you know, how your budget will fit, how it will fit your budget. Um, there's so many new things, you actually don't know where to go, which is the most expensive shop, which is cheaper, etc. But it's a journey and it's actually quite an adventure. It, it is an adventure mm. and so will be all the first things that you do here in Australia when you move over. And as long as you keep on remembering it's an adventure and you got to like just give it your best and try and have fun while doing it, I think you'll be okay. So Hara and I are just going to touch upon some of the things that you can expect, uh, hopefully give you some ideas of what to do and maybe what not to do. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and so the first thing we'd like to talk about was just probably mentioning the fact that of course in Australia you can do online shopping if you want yes. to, grocery shopping. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you do regularly or do you prefer to go into the um, shops? I think in the beginning, especially if you don't know what you want and you don't know the brands, it's perhaps easier to just go into the shop so that you can actually hold the products and see and read the labels etc you can obviously do that online but it's maybe an individual thing but i think a first time experience just for you to be able to visualize and really understand what you're yeah. buying is probably in person when you go up to the it's anyway an experience mm. so you've got to do it and you as a family now do you mm. prefer to shop online or in in the store we are fortunate enough to live very close to shops so it's actually very quick to just drop in obviously there's always temptations to buy more than what you should be buying <laughs> and but i'm one of those people <laughs> yeah, and when, but when you do online shopping you're probably more disciplined um yes we actually go to the shops ourselves okay yes. good and um we thought it would be interesting to walk it through in and sort of the process that you go through when you go shopping mm. in person uh, so the first thing that we that's an interesting thing is when you go to park at the shops in Australia you tend not to have a welcoming ceremony that you usually have when you're in South Africa no <laughs> <laughs> there's no one showing you where to park there's no one saying can I look after your car there's no there's no one there you just park and you make your way to the shops and, it, and you, you reckon it's actually possible to park without somebody showing you how to go into uh, the parking spot? <laughs> <laughs> I think all of us do have our driver's license. Uh. <laughs> um, and then the next thing, once you've actually parked your car and you've locked your car and walked away, is to get a trolley. Now, Harda has got some interesting insights into her trolley experience here mm. in Australia. Can you share with us? What, was it your first time? Yeah, it was actually, yes, just before Christmas. I must say the trolleys in Australia, it almost feels as if you need a driver's license for them because they work different from those that we were used to. I mean, all the wheels can go in all directions and that can actually bring a challenge if you're not used to that. But anyhow, the first time I did shopping, uh, we arrived just before Christmas and obviously you have to do some Christmas shopping and I remember it was also very hot on that day and I was pushing this trolley and I was thinking I will never be able to do shopping on my own again because I'm going to need my husband to push this trolley that was just hard to manage 
anyhow in the end i did the shopping and i was now on my way out to the car and i had to go down an escalator with this trolley that i can't manage and i remember very well it was hot and that the sweat was running down my back and i was with this full trolley full of christmas stuff that i couldn't handle and now i'm on this escalator and this escalator is, is going down downhill <laughs> and i had such a fear in myself that i will let this thing go and injure someone and because for us it was actually such a miracle to be able to be in australia at our age i was yeah. so worried that anything will go wrong that it will have an implication for our visa and our long-term applications etc so i was standing on this ramp this escalator that's going downhill hanging on for dear life seeing in my mind the 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 this heading in the paper saying South African deported after injuring <laughs> Aussies on an escalator with a shopping trolley. Anyhow, I managed to pack my stuff and I got home, etc. A few weeks later, my hubby was with me at, in the shops and we did the shopping and he was now pushing the trolley and we on that same escalator and the next moment he actually just let go. And I, I nearly had a heart attack because I remember previously and then the trolley was actually locked onto that escalator as you get at the airport i don't know why <laughs> the brain fog that in the beginning that disorientation anyhow so that is always my first survival story of how i didn't trust the the, the trolley and i had such a fear in myself that i will i'm going to injure someone <laughs> anyway so is it still a like a bit of a, a scary experience when you go to take your trolley now or have you <laughs> have you grown past that no 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 i've got my license now i feel quite okay <laughs> well quite <done>. calm. <laughs> so once you then manage to get your trolley and you actually make it to the grocery store you well because the trolleys are usually parked just by the entrance of the store as you have with most shops and you get different kinds of trolleys so you get the normal big size trolley which is like the deep one then you get sort of half level trolleys mm, the, the, smaller, the one. smaller ones and then you get little trolleys that you can pull uh, with a it's like a basket trolley mixture mm -hmm. and then of course you got your basket so it's up to you what you pick also the trolleys have for the kiddies for the kids that so you mm -hmm. can sit in you can have a one for one child to sit mm -hmm. one for two children and one for babies it's got like the lying down yeah um, like box. a snug and safe already in it yeah mm. so very handy because in australia we tend to not have as much help on hands at home than uh, we do uh, well from south africa so um so yeah so once you make it in the store the first section that you usually reach is the fresh produce yes that's actually quite interesting because i the first time i went in and all these lovely fresh produce was lying there with a little mist water i was actually thinking they make it grow until it's in your plate <laughs> it's a good way to think of it yes yeah. <laughs> yes it's, it's it's they they really keep it nice and mm. fresh with this mist water that's keeping it uh, moist and it the, the, it usually looks really good the quality if you, it looks almost plastic for me when i come in and i see mm. all this beautiful thin twin spelling what's it in english um, yeah, it's almost like a, a sh yeah. <laughs> the way they put it yes. nicely in the shops. Mm. Oh, that's a nice Afrikaans a struggle. We'll talk about some names as well in mm. a second. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to mention that it's really a nice, beautiful uh, layout Spray. usually. And you have the scales and the little bag. So you take the little bag and then you mm. pack your number of things in. You did say that you miss from South Africa buying boxes of yes fruit. which is more like from your local fruit and veg or your local uh, uh fruiter or gross or mm. not yes fruit and veg guy um you don't normally buy uh in box quantities like in pick and pay or woolworths in south africa but i miss to be able to buy those volumes mm. big ones so here i mean you can pack and pack and pack mm. as much as you like but yeah. it's not generally that it just comes in a in a box that you can mm. buy off the shelf so you get generally speaking the same kind of fruit and veg here yes. mostly and, and yes. it is a bit seasonal as well so they they yeah. like to try and support local yes. and they do import as well and, mm. and they actually say on the labels usually where all the fruits and the veggies come from so you know which country they're from and whether it's australian mm. or not australian because australia always try and 
really support local farmers. Very much, yes, which is a good thing. It is They're a very really good thing. behind their farmers. Uh, but you might find it interesting <laughs> looking for the red peppers or the yellow peppers mm. if you just buy, go by the name because um, they're called yes yeah they're called capsicums we've got actually there's a there's a little bit of a different language when you go and buy your fruit and veg <laughs> so we've got the peppers that can be called capsicums we have baby marrow that's called zucchini uh -huh. and then brinjal is eggplant uh, mm. Lychee and lychee. It's very similar, but it's very different as well. So Aussies call it lychee, and they even spell it different. L Y C H E E, lychee. And of course, we're used to saying lychee. Yes. They look the same, though. Mm -hmm. Lychees, lychees. <laughs> it's all looking the same. And then gem squash is uh, something that's not that easy to get a hold of. I know. No. If you've been following some of the social media posts, you'll see that people often, when they do find gem squash somewhere in Australia, I want to say, then they'll go, oh, this shop, this green grocer has got gem squash. And then suddenly, I think it lasts maybe 24 hours, and then all the South Africans yes. have gone and <laughs> pulled out the whole <laughs> stash yeah. of gem squash. Yes, I could actually not believe that it's not that easily found. I mean, that's like a staple for us. Mm. Um, yes. But you can actually plant it yourself if you harvest the seeds. Exactly right. You can plant and grow in your backyard if you want to. <laughs> tip tip, and it's also cheaper yes. if you do it yourself. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And then of course we get the golden kiwis here, the green kiwis, but also the golden kiwis are locally Very grown. Nice. And if you haven't tried a golden kiwi, I do suggest that you do because they don't have that sour. They're delicious. From the, the They're sour. lovely. Yeah, They're really I nice. really like yeah, them kids too. Kids like them too. Mm. Uh, so, so yeah, so it's pretty much mostly the same kind of fruit and veg that you mm. get. The quality is really up there, but I have to say, I think the prices are pretty, you know, it's not cheap necessarily. Mm. I always say nothing in Australia is cheap, but you can shop a bargain. So mm. it's often that they have a special on. Yes. And they advertise the specials really well. So if you keep your eye on either the website of these grocery stores, or sometimes they have like little vouchers that they deliver in your post boxes. Mm. And so... That does help, but yes, if it's in season, uh, it's cheaper. And then, of course, they have sometimes like a half price special, or so. If you just keep your eye on the specials, you can really yes. shop fairly and, reasonable. And another valuable tip is, for instance, at Woolworths, there's a there's 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 an aisle where they actually stock what they call the odd bunch. Mm. Those are not, if say for instance carrots, they're not all the perfect size and shape. They are a bit different but there's nothing wrong with them the quality is still fine they're just not exactly all the same and they're normally a bit more affordable they are i love them yeah i always feel like i have to support buying the odd bunch because i feel so sad for somebody who doesn't want to buy the carrot that looks like the other carrot you know sometimes a carrot has like a little extra bobble or a <laughs> yeah, or it's just a little bit perfect. smaller or bigger than the other one. So yes. I always love to support the odd bunch. I'm like, yes. I'll take you. Don't worry. You know, <laughs> I'll give you a lovely home. <laughs> and then also as you enter the shop, there's normally um, a display on what is in season. And that's normally at a cheaper price. That's true. Mm. Yeah. And then also around the section of the fresh produce, we get the nuts section. Mm. Now, it's been a while since I've shopped nuts in South Africa, Khadra, so you might mm. be able to shed a bit more light. But from my understanding is that we have quite a selection here. Yes, quite a selection. And I must say the prices are more affordable in terms of nuts. It's still not cheap. Mm. But if I can remember back, um, nuts were something that was quite pricey. And yes, and I think nuts are big here. This, uh, yeah. Mm. So that's actually very nice, uh, a nice snack to be able to get your hands on at not a too expensive price and a healthy one and they do also mm. do all the different kind of like flavors and coatings and yeah yes but you can just get roasted mm. or natural or yes big selection mm. moving on from the nuts and the fresh produce you obviously get the other kind of fresh produce which is the meat section mm -hmm. so how does the meat compare in your opinion mm. price wise I must say price wise um, it's probably more or less the same however I find that lamb is more affordable here probably because it's produced here yeah. but in general what I can say is that the quality of the meat is really superior I must say if in all the time that we've been here if we bought 
perhaps twice where the meat was tough or not high quality that was probably max and I mean you don't need to go for expensive cuts it's even still very good quality and for those of you who knows a lot about steak etc you will see that the steak here has got more marbling in it's not wagyu at all but it's got more marbling so in general it's really good quality mm, that's good and then in terms of meat they always also have a, 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 a section where they've got their specials um, I would quite often, if there is, say for instance, leg of lamb, and I know that we're fairly close to Christmas, but not yet Christmas, I will buy something like that and just freeze it when I see it's on special. Mm. Because quite often the specials are really good prices. Mm. Yeah, that's the thing. Mm. Australia is a country of specials, of bargains. Yeah. <laughs> you just mm. got to be on the ball and be aware. And yeah. If you have the time to shop like that, then that's great. But some mm. people don't care they don't mind paying a bit of extra just for the luxury of buying what they want at that point in time mm -hmm. so um, it's up to you how you want to uh, go about doing it um, we like to shop in the plant-based section because as a family we are plant-based so Australia has actually gone leaps and bounds forward in the last I'd say about three years in terms of the selection that we have for plant-based meats so soy based meats, pea protein, uh, there's such a variety of different kind of plant based meats these days. So you can buy like a chicken, fake chicken looking chicken, you can buy bacon or bacon uh, version of plant based. We have uh, obviously all the kinds of sausages that you can think about, vegetable sausages that taste like a vegetable sausage but you can also get sausages that taste like a meat sausage and it's got that same texture and and flavoring as well and then of course um, chicken schnitzels and nuggets plant-based so there's a quite a big selection of that and in the last three years it has at least doubled in the variety that's available and it is a very much growing quite substantially as well so if that's something that you're into Australia is a great place to come and do plant-based diets. Uh, moving on from the meat section, you usually get the dairy kind of areas, cheese and milk and yogurts. And what do you think about the kinds of the, the variety yes. of yogurts that we get? Mm. Oh, yogurts, yeah, obviously. And you also get the soy yogurts and also lactose-free yogurts, etc. And then in, in terms of milk, um, obviously you get full cream. And then what we have here is what they call high-low, which, which is similar to the 2% um, that we had in South Africa. You also get your fat-free milk. Creams, all sorts of different creams. Whipping cream, thickened cream, cream that you can use, dollops. All sorts <laughs> of creams. Yes, quite often you stand there and you think, now which cream should I be buying? Um, so there's a selection of that as well and then obviously the cheeses I mean we've got everything and quite mm -hmm. often it's locally made it's also imported so yeah mm. big it's, big big variety of cheese yes. and and quite often the Aussies will invite you for for what they call drinks and nibbles and that would quite often be a cheese platter with yeah. crackers and biscuits and cheese mm. Mm. and cold meat sometimes if they want yes and maybe some fruit yeah depends on what the people like that's um, yes. setting up the drinks and nibbles but yes it mm. definitely involves drinks as well <laughs> mm. and we'll talk about the drinks in a second uh, but um, yeah the the milk varieties are enormous that extends to oat milk soy milk mm. cashew milk what else there is just I can't even remember there are so many dairy alternatives here and not just one version of it there could be like a flavored version say like a vanilla soy milk and then there is a fattening soy or less fattening soy and a more full cream and a more this and it's just if you stand in front of the milk aisle or it's just yeah there's a lot to choose from and of course we also get the dairy free lactose free cheeses here um, some of them melt better than others <laughs> so it's a bit of a, a try as you go along and see what works for you so yeah from the dairy we then move on to the biscuits and the crackers and as Kata yes. was saying it's a common thing to have cracker kind of platters often what you can buy for example if you want to buy for your school kids is they have little packages that they make up so they've got a few crackers and some cheese pieces mm. that's already sliced up pre-packed yeah. pre-packed and it's just like a right size that you can put it in a lunchbox for the kids or it's some um, crackers and some like a spready version yeah. that you can put on and I've seen some with like cold meat 
slices as well and yeah. it's the, yeah, the very creative yes yes for lunch boxes etc mm. yeah. and anzac biscuits yes yum it's my husband's <laughs> favorite so what does anzac stand for how do you know? anzac yeah is australia new zealand it's got to do with a with a with a um, commemoration is it right that's of right. the war that's right mm -hmm. so australia new zealand um army corps i think it stands for but what it means is that we salute and we appreciate and we respect the people who have fallen in the war before us and, and kept this country to the standard uh, that we mm -hmm. have decided to come and make our lives at. So we are also always very thankful for them. And they have biscuits here that they use around that time. And Anzac Day is usually in, in April, May, April, I think, 25th of April. Um, and the biscuits are yummy. So it's a, a mm. oat. Yes, oat, it's like an oats cookie, cookie, but it's a chewy, yeah, gooey, nice, yes. Yeah, very yummy. <laughs> you got to come and try it. Yeah, sometimes with raisins, sometimes <laughs> not, yes. <laughs> and then the other very well-known one that we have, uh, as you would know by now, are called Tim Tams. Now, I don't know how many varieties you've tried before, but there are so many varieties on this side that I haven't even tried all of them. Yeah, There's like single that. chocolate, double chocolate, triple chocolate. Dark chocolate, white chocolate, <laughs> strawberry, uh, Red salted, velvet, ca salted caramel. Salted ca Oh, I like that. I think that's probably my yeah, favorite yeah. one. I also li I like the double chocolate. Oh, yeah. And there's also a way to eat them. That's right. Yeah, I was taught that when we just came here. And I just want to say to you guys, those things are not kilojoule free. <laughs> you will find that out if you consume so many as what we used to do. You're supposed to bite off one corner and the other corner diagonal. And then you sip your coffee through it and then you eat it. Mm -hmm. And when you start doing that, you can't stop. That, that's so that, right. this carries a warning. Yes. <laughs> Listen, kids. This is unhealthy, <laughs> but it's so damn good. <laughs> All right, so if you want to know how to do it, my son has actually made a video on how to eat your Tim Tams, and it's, he shows it. So hop on to, is it Mr. Monaco or Mr. Bordeaux? I'll have to go and check. We'll put the link down below this video where my two little cute boys were demonstrating exactly how to eat a Tim Tam. <laughs> and, and I suggest that if you go and watch it, have your Tim Tams and your coffee ready because if you watch other people do it, it's just like you just want to have some yourself. <laughs> um, and then it, we have something called Biscoff here, which is very similar to the nutty crust that you get in South Africa, that kind of biscuit. And I love that taste. Is it like a caramel, buttery toffee? toffee that, yeah, okay, oh. yeah. But the, the biscuit itself is not a, a toffee. It's just a, a crack, you know, a crispy kind of biscuit, like a nutty crust. But it is to die for. And to top it off, they've even made a spread. A biscoff spread so yes if you can't consume the biscuits fast enough I suggest get a tub of the spread and you can just eat it with a spoon again this is not very healthy <laughs> um, and then we'll go to the next aisle which is not healthy either the chocolates and the lollies and Kava is really good at um, helping people lose weight so if you haven't <laughs> know if you don't know that um, we'll have her links below and you can get in touch with her after we talk about all the chocolates and the way to add the way. Um, if you need a bit of extra help, she can definitely help you with that. Uh, but yes, in general, the size and the variety of lollies in Australia is pretty big. Um, and if the number of different kinds of things are not interesting enough to talk about, the actual size of slabs... <laughs> Can, can be, be very big very big mm -hmm. they don't just do the i think the normal size is about this in south africa but here they go like at least double the size mm -hmm. sometimes so it can be it can be challenging for you to walk in the shops and not pick the really big one i must just perhaps say something there that a lolly what does a lolly mean a lolly doesn't mean a lollipop it's not like a seich lacquer or a stocky lacquer a lolly means like a bar of chocolate Sweetie. or yes that comes in a wrapping. That's what we mean if we say a lolly here. Yeah. That's something that I also had to learn. That's true. Yeah, yes. a lolly doesn't mean like a, a just a lollipop. Maybe. Yeah, it's not a lollipop. It's not a sweet on a stick. The, although it could be that too. Yeah, but lollies here refer to any treat, any sweet treat essentially. Whereas in South Africa, we just always spoke about sweeties. Sweeties. Yeah. So or sweeties for me could be chocolate or anything yeah. that's 
yeah, that you t- tend to give kids at birthday parties and they <laughs> run amok. <Yeah. laughs> okay, moving on from the chocolates and the lollies is the tuna aisle. Do you guys eat much tuna at home? Fish? We do eat tuna. We tend to only eat the tuna in brine because this is what we used to. And I think that's, that's, that's the, the, the healthier option. But you are very spoiled for choice. We, we count it. Was it last night? Yes. That we counted the different flavors of tuna just for the one brand that you get. And we counted 16 different flavors of tuna cans that you can buy in Australia. Yeah. <laughs> it's things like tomato basil, sweet chili, teriyaki, onion and tomato, red Thai curry. The list goes sweet on. Sweet corn and mayonnaise and yeah. And yeah, it's just you are we are spoiled for choice in the tuna aisle and quite often that will also be packed with a cracker you can for for a lunch Mm. you can have like a sachet of tuna with crackers Mm. or biscuits biscuits Mm. is the is is the terminology that we used to that will come with that that you could use for a lunch yes very very nice you also actually get like a canned chickpeas that's flavored so the same canned size as tuna that you get you get them in chickpeas and they're really divine so often just open up the can and you eat it with a spoon out it's very very nice and then we go to the rice aisle the rice and the and the flour kind of section Mm. what what was the the very uh, obvious thing for you that's different here first time yes you actually get sachets with kind of pre-cooked rice that you can pop into the microwave for 90 minutes or 90 seconds (laughs) 90 seconds so really if you prepared something and you need to bulk it up you need to add rice you just put it in the microwave for 90 seconds and you've got rice and that also comes in different flavors you can have like a a sweet chili or a coconut and lemongrass if you for instance prepared a Thai curry and you want to add something to that then yes obviously you get the normal rice that you can cook yourself you get the basmati and yasmin and normal white rice but you also get brown rice and wild rice and all these different flavored rices Mm. and then obviously you get them in those sachets that you can do family size just two portions pop it in the microwave for 90 minutes and you've got your rice Mm. which is great on a very busy day yes 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 we do use that often may i say as the family if the planning wasn't quite sufficient time wise before we really have a hungry bunch of kids we're like where are the pre-cooked rice open up the sachet put it in the microwave quick quick and then you've got a meal pretty much to go if you want to combine that with your can of tuna that's flavored mix that up Mm, very nice okay so from there on we go to the well the flower aisle which is pretty much usually in the Mm. same aisle but it it's also something that was that's quite uh, we've got such a variety and a selection to choose from normal flour as you would call the normal durum or the wheat flours yes you get the self-raising and the non-self-raising whatever that's just the cake so that was interesting because I think in South Africa we call it cake flour yeah and here they just call it flour or self-raising flour yes so that's yeah cook meal bloom yeah it's just flour here yeah yes. whereas self-raising flour is self-raising food. yeah it's so the, that's same, the name. same same name so so yeah that was interesting for me but then we get things like tapioca flour and we get mm-hmm. almond flour that's probably almond flour meal almond meal and then you probably get that in south africa as well um and uh what's the cornstarch the other thing is of course sugar um, you get your normal white refined sugars you get your brown sugars the different kind of sugars something that I saw here which was quite interesting is you get what they call a jam sugar and I think there's a little bit of pectin in it so you know when strawberries is in season and you actually want to cook a little bit of strawberry jam then you can just use that sugar and it actually makes it set your syrup is quite thick that's mm. something that I've experienced uh, or yes experienced um, and then of course all the different alternatives to sugar we yes. spoke about stevia and monk sugar and natvia okay natvia yeah, so those yeah. are the natural ones you also get the more chemical based ones yeah <laughs> like was it Canderal? I think it was called Canderal in it South was Africa. Or Canderal. And so here they have a different name, which I can't remember now what that is. It's a blue and white box. Um, but yes, yeah, so the the natural ones are so like there's a big variety, and 
from my experience, the monk sugars are the best because that does not have any kind of aftertaste or bitter taste or different taste. It tastes very similar it's to sugar. Very similar. So if you have it in your coffee, you wouldn't necessarily know. Or you can bake with it as well. Yeah. And you get them in the, um, yeah. you know, the like sugar, like the little sachets or in tubs. So it's a big variety. So you can avoid the aspartame completely. Yeah. Um, but not have true sugar with, with all those kilojoules if you're trying to cut down on sugar. That's right. And then one aspect of eating and being a human being is that you need to go to the loo as well. <laughs> so to go to the loo, we do need to use toilet paper. Luckily here, we've got a variety. <laughs> yeah, and now they If it's not it, COVID. <laughs> I just wanted to say, yes, apparently that was the... the the most precious thing that you can own while we had COVID. More than, more than all gold. over the world, yes. More important than medication was toilet paper. <laughs> Still crazy, but yes. I remember standing there and looking at the toilet paper and think, I just want normal two-ply toilet paper. Can I please just have that? And then I want to go home. <laughs> just by the way, I've never seen single-ply toilet paper here at all. I, I, don't, I don't know whether it exists. I haven't seen it. Yeah. No, it's, um, yeah, toilet paper has a big variety and some really thick ones and some soft ones and ones with little pictures on and ones with Flav indent and... Not flavors, fragrances. Fragrances, yes. Yeah. If, so, um, yeah, lots, lots of choice. We're very spoiled. And then if you do... Mm. Sorry, yeah, I just wanted that. to say what's very interesting as well when you look at prices, because prices are intimidating when you come over, mm. um, is that uh, on, for instance, the toilet paper, it will give you a price, I think, say, per, I think, 100 sheets, I think, to give you an idea, you know, if you stand there and you see all this toilet paper, what do you buy, what's value for money, so it will say that this is, for, for instance, 19 cents per 100 sheets, this 125, 35, etc., mm -hmm. then you also know, and it's the same with all sorts of other, with food, they will perhaps quote you per each or per 100 grams mm. or per kilogram. If you, for instance, stand in front of the mushrooms and you want to know whether you want to pick your own and put it in your brown paper bag or you want it pre-packed, yep. you can just check and see what they charge per kilo. And then quite often those that you can pick yourself are cheaper, but mm. not always you've got to check. So just to have an idea of what is um, you know, more cost effective, have a look at that. They always give the price and then they break it down at the bottom so that you can see what's value for mm. money. Per 100 gram or per kilogram, that's yeah, the version. Yeah. Uh, and I find that really handy because when sometimes the packages are different sizes, so yes. you can't just compare this package to that package mm. because it might be 500 gram versus 800 gram or something and then you know <laughs> short of having to take out your phone and trying to do maths that you mm. that you learned maybe in grade four <laughs> uh, they, they have they have done that for you um, in advance so that's that's definitely very handy and this comes to the checkout as well because um, by the time that you have packed your trolley and you have navigated this funny trolley <laughs> to get to the mm. checkout uh, it's time for you to decide whether you want somebody to help you check out your stuff or whether you want to go to the self-checkout. Yeah, that's what? quite an experience. Mm. Normally, if you don't have a big trolley full, you will go to the self-checkout because the, it's just a space and a logistical kind of thing. But it's very in interesting when you stand there. The first thing that it will ask you is, have you got your own bags? So then you go, yes, and you've got to put your bags there. The area that you put your scanned groceries in is a scale so you have to scan your product and then put it in your bag and then it will actually measure that it's there before you can do your next scan that's right it mm. will not very let you scan the next one the very it's like no 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 first mm. gotta put it away <laughs> it's very sophisticated it is sophisticated but it also cuts back a lot on labor costs for the shop so it actually helps keep the prices down and because in australia uh, most people don't crook the system, you know, they yeah. do the right thing and they don't honesty. steal. The honesty is definitely uh, in the front of everybody's minds. They can actually do self-checkouts here. Nobody checks your bag once you've packed it mm -hmm. to see whether um, it is what you said it is in there. Uh, you just pack your bag, you pay with your card. Mm -hmm. Cash payments are very few and far between. You can still pay cash, yes. but it's very... Yeah, I don't see that happening often. You pack your bag, you take your bags, and off you go. And that's that's yeah. it. End of the story. Or you can pay with your your cell phone like mm -hmm. this. I've clicked it. There's my card. Or you can pay with your iWatch. 
Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, you can watch. pay with your iWatch. There's my card loaded as well. So you just say, check out, how do you want to pay, card. I tap my watch and it prints you your receipt and off you go. That's you right. can sometimes even choose whether you want your receipt or not because they, they save on that. Mm -hmm. You will always be asked whether you'd like a receipt and no, most people go no because what do you do with those slip, that slip? Exactly, throw it yeah. away. Yeah. And as I said, they don't check whether what's on the slip is in the back, so there's really no point. Except if you bought something that you think you might want to return, yes. then you can consider that. However, we have reward cards in Australia. That's a pretty big thing. So most mm. stores have loyalty. a loyalty kind of card. Uh, and usually the grocery stores have that too. So when you do pay at the checkout, you then scan your loyalty card and that holds the transaction. So there's even mm. less reason for you to mm. print out your receipt because if you do want to come and return something, you can always just say, here's my loyalty card. They can scan mm. that and they can look at the history and see the transaction that you did. So that's really handy. Mm. Uh, just to mention a last thing about the checkout process is the bags. Because mm. we used to be able to get bags for free, plastic bags, but of course the mm. whole process of trying to cut back on plastic, plastic. bags, mm. they then made it that you have to pay for your plastic bags, mm -hmm. and they've pretty much now scrapped that. You can still get some plastic bags um, in the, on the east coast of Australia, but in the west coast? Yes, in Western Australia you don't see them anymore. We've got big paper bags, and obviously you can buy high quality material mm. bags or other bags that you obviously will use again. But uh, yeah, I can't remember when was the last time I saw a plastic bag. Um, I just the normal plastic bag that you would like use pick and pay and Woolworths and checkers, that kind of plastic bag. Mm. Yeah, they, they're not available. Big, proper, good quality paper bags. It's obviously recyclable, yeah. but uh, all bags that you can use more than once. Mm. Yes, I always, always carry at least two or three little bags rolled up in my handbag mm. when I go to the shops just in case. And that's it pretty much. Once you finish that, you can either take your trolley to your car and unpack in your car, or you can leave the trolley there and you can carry your bags. Yeah. And just remember, if you do take your trolley to your car, then it's an expectation that you, once you've unloaded your trolley, mm -hmm. that you park your trolley into specific trolley parking bays. That's mm -hmm. sort of mostly around yes. the, the, the parking There's always areas. one close by. There's always one close by, that's right. Yeah. Uh, and there's nobody that comes and um, take your trolley off you <laughs> at the car. Yes. <laughs> nobody that unpacks your trolley for you. You do it yourself. No one demands any pay for anything. No one returning your trolley. You return it yourself. That's right. But see it as, you know, see it as a bit of an exercise yeah, it's a positive routine. positive thing. It's and a, you save money as well. You save money. That's right. So, and, and you, you really appreciate your groceries <laughs> when they're in your cupboard. <laughs> you do. So that's it. That's our take on grocery shopping and hopefully when you come for your first shop that this will provide some insight to yes. you. Uh, and I would like to thank Gerda for her insight and sharing your wisdom with us <laughs> and um, yeah, coming yes. on this, this journey of living in Australia. Yes, just don't be in a hurry when you go for your first time shopping. Actually maybe take the husband and the kids with. Um, unless it's going to be a, a nightmare but uh, yes it's going to take you a while but just hang in there and I normally say the moment you find your brand just try and remember that this is the one um, because you are spoiled for choice and, and it's a good thing but in, in the beginning it may be uh, a little bit intimidating because what do you choose? That's right yes so if you enjoyed this video please give us a thumbs up Hit the like and subscribe button. It's important for us. You help us do that because it helps us to be able to come back and give you more of these kinds of videos. Follow us on shaminitv.com.au and we'll have Gerda's details. Do you want to give us your website as well? Yes, it's, it's drgerda.com.au. I do um, the emotional survival coaching for the migrants when you come over and you battle the preparation before you come. And then I also do the weight management. Very important. So for all this grocery shopping that After we've just done. After the shopping. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> all right, guys. Enjoy your day and we'll see you next time. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thanks for watching today's episode. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you want to find your dream life faster and land your Aussie job sooner, Migration Made Easy, our signature online course, is the place to be for you. Hop onto shamanitv.com.au forward slash waitlist to make sure that you know when our doors do open the next time. Thanks for coming back each week. 
and I hope you hit the subscribe button so that you are notified whenever we have a new episode. All right, my friend, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Thank you.